the Jack Benny program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. This is Don Wilson, friends. Say, if you like poetry, here's something that may give you a little chuckle. Listen. I like the cigarette I smoke, a statement free from bunk or hoke. There is no reason for it, brother, except I don't like any other. That's straight from the typewriter of H.I. Phillips, the noted syndicated columnist. It's part of a statement that Mr. Phillips made regarding the cigarette he smokes, Lucky Strike. In another part of the statement, he said, Long ago, I found Lucky's had the taste that suited me, and I've stuck to them through the years. I smoke Lucky Strike for enjoyment and relaxation. End of quote. Yes, indeed, the word enjoyment. That's the main thing you smoke for. Well, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste, and the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. They just have to, because they're made of fine tobacco, and they're made better. For quite some time now, we've been asking smokers to be happy, go lucky. If you haven't tried Lucky's, why not take care of that next time you buy cigarettes? Believe me, Lucky's do taste better. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike! Lucky Strike! Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's go back to Saturday noon. The cast of the Jack Benny Show has just completed rehearsal and are now walking to the corner drugstore for a light lunch. Now, Jack, uh, I thought the rehearsal went well. Yes, Bob, it sounds like a real funny show. Yeah, funny. <laughs> <laughs> and remember, fellas, next week's rehearsal has been changed to Friday. Oh, gee, that's, that's too bad. What's the matter, Bob? Well, I made an appointment to go up to Pebble Beach and play golf with my brother Bing. Bing who? Bing Crosby. Name dropper. <laughs> Dennis, please. Bob, uh, you can miss rehearsal. All right, kids, let's wait for the light to change before we cross the street. I'm going to cross. Hey, Don, the light's against you. Oh, I don't care. But, Don, here comes a big truck. He'll just have to take his chances like everybody else. <laughs> Well, that's... Uh-oh, the light's changed. Come on, kids, let's cross. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sake. Don, if I told you once, I told you a hundred times. Stop stepping on those MGs. <laughs> Walk over them. <laughs> Not funny. Now, come on, let's all go in the drugstore. Fellas, here's a vacant table over here. I'm right with you, Don. Yeah, this is fine. Let's see, where's the waitress? Oh, there she is. I'll call her. Oh, miss? Miss? What do you want, Mac? <laughs> uh, we'd like to, uh, we'd like to order. Can we have some menus? We ain't got no menus. <laughs> Now, how do we know what you're serving? It's painted on the window outside. You mean, before I can order something to eat, I have to walk all the way outside? Yeah, and if you're smart, you'll keep walking. <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't need a menu. All I want is a Swiss cheese sandwich and a glass of milk. Yeah, I'll have a chicken sandwich and coffee. Now, let's see. What do I want? Oh, uh, miss, does this month have an R in it? Yeah. Okay, I'll have an oyster malted milk. <laughs> Go ahead, miss. Bring the order. You mean you're going to let him eat that? Certainly. It may make him sick. <laughs> now, go ahead. Okay, I'll be 
right back with your food. Hey, wait a minute, miss. You forgot to take my order. Oh, yeah. What'll you have? Cinemascope. <laughs> Miss, why is it every time I come in here you make remarks about my being fat? Because you are fat. Well, you can forget it once in a while. Imagine you've seen fatter people than me. Yeah, but I had to buy a ticket. John, why don't you order and stop being so sensitive? Oh, okay. Miss, I'll have a hot roast beef sandwich and mashed potatoes. I'll be right back. Don, I wouldn't argue with that girl if I were you. She's not just a waitress, you know. She's in pictures, too. Her last picture was Gentlemen Prefer Blondes. She was the gentleman. <laughs> Played it well, too. Say, fellas, while we're waiting, I'm going over to the drug counter. Oh, I'll go with you, Don. I gotta get some stuff, too. Say, Bob, I'm kind of glad we're alone for a second. I want to talk to you privately. What about? Well, during rehearsal, I noticed you're bawling Frankie Remley out. Now, what did he do this time? Oh, Frankie really aggravates me, Jack. The way he throws his money around, he never saves anything. Gee, I didn't know that. Yeah, if it weren't for me, he wouldn't have the necessities of life, like room, board, and bail. <laughs> oh, that's a shame. Well, hasn't, hasn't Frankie put anything aside for a rainy day? Not a dime. That's why last week I secretly took out a life insurance policy on him, and I didn't tell him a thing about it. On Remley? You mean you forged his ex? <laughs> I mean, is that... Is, is that legal? Well, certainly I can do that. It's in our contract. Oh, well, that was nice of you. What kind of a policy did you take out on Frankie? Well, I've insured him against sickness, accident, and the electric chair. <laughs> You're kidding. Oh, I got the same policy on all the boys in the band. All the boys in the band are insured against the electric chair? Yeah, Sammy the drummer isn't really bald. He's just ready. <laughs> Well, what do you know? <laughs> Gee, I wonder if I could get a policy for my writers. <laughs> oh, well. Oh, Don, did you get what you wanted? Yeah, Jack. Hey, you're just in time. Here comes the girl with the food. Here's your grub, boys. Oh, waitress. Yeah? Shouldn't there be some gravy on these mashed potatoes? There was, but after three days, it soaks in. <laughs> Don't start anything. Let's just eat what we've got if we can eat now. <laughs> okay. Say, I'd like a little music while we're having lunch. Miss, if I gave you a dime, would you put it in the jukebox? If you gave me a dime, I'd do a floor show myself. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, I'll go pick out a number, Mr. Benny. <laughs> Hey, Dennis, see if you can find a Bing Crosby record. Why should I help him? He's got five homes already. <laughs> All right, play one of your own records. Okay. Oh, here's one. Wanted someone who kissed me me closely then stole my heart wanted someone I trusted who gave no warning we'd ever part she was last seen hiding out in someone's arms he knew nothing of the danger in her charms A jury may find her guilty But I'd forgive her If I could see A signed confession That she's repented And really wanted No one but me I'd forgive her if I could see a signed confession. 
confession that she's repented and really wanted no one but me. That's a real good record Thank you By the way, kid, I've never asked you this before But when you record a song, how much do they pay you? Three cents for every record they sell Hey, that doesn't sound like much, does it, Jack? No, but when you consider that there are 160 million people in the United States And if each one of them bought Dennis's record He'd make, uh, let's see, three times 160 million Why, Dennis, you'd make nearly five million dollars If this is a build-up to stick me with the lunch check You're wasting your time <laughs> I'm not trying to stick you with anything. Hey, let's get the check and get out of here, huh? Yeah, here comes the waitress now. Are you clowns through stuffing yourselves? <laughs> hmm. Miss, miss, I'll take the check. Here you are. Well, let's see. Okay, here, this takes care of the bill. And this is a tip for you. Oh, boy, a quarter. Now I got a chance with Ruba Rosa. <laughs> come, come on. <laughs> Why do we come in this drugstore? Come on, fellas, let's go. Yeah, it's getting late, and I want to go to a movie tonight. Now, wait a minute, Dennis. I got a better idea. Why don't you all come over to my house, and we'll play some four-handed gin rummy? Hey, yeah, let's do that. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, fellas, I can't make it. Tonight's the night I... Well, I just can't make it. Tonight's the night you what, Don? Oh, I'd rather not tell you, Jack. You'd think I'm being silly. No, we won't, Don. What is it? Well, tonight I'm visiting a medium. We're holding a seance. Don, you're kidding. A seance? You don't believe in things like that, do you? Well, sure I do. I've been there several times before. In fact, last time I went, the medium put me in a trance. A real trance, Don? Yeah, she whispered several mystic words, used a little hypnotism, then everything went black. And my spirit flew out of my body. Not flew, Don. Waddled. <laughs> Believe me. But, Don, do you really believe in things like this? Well, I don't know why you're so amazed, Jack. A lot of people do. I do, too. Oh, well, look, fellas. If you all seem to believe in it, I've got a good idea. Instead of playing cards at my house tonight, let's have a seance. Okay, that's fine. I'll bring the medium. All right, boys. Now, see you all at my house at 8 o'clock. <laughs> Is that you, Mr. Benny? Yes, Rochester, where are you? Right here in the kitchen. I'm turning the clock ahead an hour. Oh, yes, it's daylight savings time. You know, I like daylight savings time. <laughs> well, it doesn't make any difference to me what the clock says. What do you mean? Since I've been working for you, I'm a dawn to dust man. <laughs> oh, Rochester, stop complaining. You don't work so hard. I don't, eh? I got housemaid's knee clear up to the hip. <laughs> Rochester, if you think that... Come in. Don, it's not 8 o'clock yet. What are you doing here so early? Well, Jack, right after I left you, I ran into the sportsman quartet, and they have a number they want to do on your show, and it needs a good rehearsal. What's that got to do with me? In the number, you play your violin. My violin? Oh, well, good, good. Rochester, where's my violin? In the case. All right, Don, I'll be ready in a minute. What number am I going to play with the, with the quartet? The saber dance. The saber dance. Yeah, here's your music. Okay, let's take it. You've heard us sing about them. You should never be without them. Better by luckies, better by luckies, better try luckies, better try luckies. It's a cigarette that you will like. <laughs> you better hurry, hurry. You don't want us all to worry. Hurry up, buy them, hurry up, try them. Look at your missing, look at your missing. Hurry up and try a lucky strike. <laughs> Enjoy them, it's true. Luckies taste better, yes, really they do. This is a smoother smoke. 
sure to please particular folks. Lucky strikes are made of that fine and that light mouth of back You don't know what you're missing if you've not been smoking this And hurry up now and buy a carton that should be enough to start on You won't get a better cigarette mm. <laughs> We know you like a lucky strike Now before we finish, there is one more thing to say, and this is it. Don't you think that Benny has improved his fiddle playing quite a bit? was swell. Gee, I had a lot to do. Yeah. You know, I like to do that kind of a number where I have a chance to play my violin, and I, I'll bet it sells Lucky Strikes, too. Oh, it does, Jack. It does. You know something, Don? A lot of people think I can't play the violin because I kid a lot. But I have good technique, nice tone, and as a matter of fact, I consider myself quite an accomplished musician. I'd like to go on there with our Murrow's program and answer that. <laughs> Well, Jack, the sportsman and I have to run along. I'll see you at 8 o'clock. Oh, yeah, 8 o'clock. Don't forget to bring the medium. We're going to have our seance. I won't. So long. So long, Don. Well, Don, we're all here, and the medium hasn't arrived yet. Don't worry. She'll be here soon, Jack. Hey, by the way, what's her name, Don? Madam Zimba. Gee, that's a silly name. What's silly about it? And listen, Dennis, a seance is a very serious thing. So I don't want you doing anything stupid. Oh, I won't, and I'm very glad to be here. And I hope Madame Zimba can contact Sherlock Holmes. Why? I want to find out who stole the ding-dong. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, young in head. <laughs> Listen to me. I don't want you... Well, that must be Madame Zimba now. I'll get it. Good evening. Good evening. I am Madame Zimba. Come in. Madam Zimba, we're expecting you. Madam Zimba, my name is Jack Benny. Oh, gentlemen, gentlemen, this is Madam Zimba. How do you do, Madam Zimba? Well, shall we go on with the seance? Yes. And let me say that the signs all go well for this evening. Tonight, a small comet will cross the Earth's orbit. This is fortunate. Well, are comets good for seances? Yes. In fact, when the tremendous Halley's Comet passes close to the Earth, Seances are at their best. But that only happens about once a century. That's right. You know, the last time it was visible from the Earth was in 1910. Oh, did you see Halley's Comet, Mr. Benny? Twice. <laughs> Dennis, keep quiet. What's that? I am ready. It's time to start. Now, everybody, sit down. Form a circle and hold hands. Come on, fellas. Come on, let's, let's do it. <laughs> and now I repeat the mystic incantation. And then we... Wait a minute. What's wrong? There are only five of us here. To contact the spirits of the dead, I need a secret circle of six. Gee, what are we going to do? Oh, oh, I know who to get. Oh, Rochester! <laughs> <laughs> Rochester! 
Rochester. Yes, Mr. Benny? Rochester, we're holding a seance, but we need six people before we can contact the spirits. So you're going to join us. Who, me? <laughs> Yes, you. Look, Rochester, if you're afraid, you don't have to be. A seance is a perfectly normal experience. Uh -huh. People have seances every night when they contact the dead. Uh -huh. Now sit down and join us. Wouldn't you like to talk to the spirits? Not until I'm one of them. <laughs> Madam Zimba, maybe you can convince them. I'll try. Look, there's nothing to be afraid of. Uh. <laughs> and it will be an interesting experience. You'll meet the spirits of so many famous people who have passed on. Lady, I don't want to meet nobody I can't shake hands with. <laughs> Rochester, stop worrying and sit down. Now, let's start. I'll, I'll put out the lights. There. There we are. Proceed, Madam Simba. Oh, spirits, we are ready. Oh, spirits of the netherworld, wherever you are, whatever you are doing, I, Madam Zimba, command your presence. Now we mortals will sit in complete silence and wait. Look! Look, I think we've contacted the spirit world. There's something white coming in through the window. I'll go fix you a sandwich, boss. <laughs> Sit down. <laughs> yes, you're breaking the mood. Spirits come in, come through the great cosmos, through the unknown, and visit with us. Quiet, everybody. I've made a contact. Come in. I am here with a message. Who is it? Who is it? It's not for you. If it's for me, tell him to slip it under the door. <laughs> Rochester, sit down. It's not for you either. I have contacted the spirit of Dennis Day's great grandfather. Gee, Dennis, me boy, I've been watching you all your life, and I've waited all these years to contact you. Come closer to me, me boy. Okay. A little closer. Yes, sir. A little closer. Here I am. Ouch! How can a ghost do that? There's no explanation to the mysteries of the outer world. Wait a minute. I've made another contact. It's a famous spirit. One who's been trying to speak to you, Mr. Benny. Me? Yes. It's the spirit of Diamond Jim Brady. Gosh. Diamond Jim Brady. Jack Benny. I want to talk to you, Jack Benny. I'm here, Jim. <laughs> Jack, I've been watching over you for many years, and you've been a big disappointment to me. You've gone against all the things I've stood for. Slap him. <laughs> Dennis, be quiet. What, what were you saying, Jim? You've amassed a great share of worldly goods, and yet you persist with your penny-pinching ways. But... No buts. Why don't you live a little? Spend, spend, spend. Be like I was. I spent my money lavishly. Whenever I walked into a nightclub or restaurant, I'd pick up every check in the place. 
I had fun. That's fun? <laughs> I never, I never thought of it that way. Well, think, man, think. And believe me when I tell you, Jack Benny, you should spend because you can't take it with you. Are you sure? <laughs> None of us were able to, but the odds up here are 10 to 1, you'll find a way. <laughs> Look, look, Mr. Brady. I must leave now, but remember my advice. Spend, 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 spend. Oh, the seance is over. Well, what do you think of it, Jack? It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. And you want to know something, fellas? It made me see the light. I'm going to change my ways. Starting immediately, everybody on my show will get a raise. And Rochester, you're getting one too. Gee, thanks, boss. In fact, I'm going to the next room and phone my business manager and tell him all about your raises right now. Excuse me. <laughs> well, how did it go, Mr. Wilson? Fine, fine. You were perfect. You did a great job of acting. Well, I thought we all played our parts great. Who was the smart aleck that slapped me? <laughs> doesn't make any difference. Everyone acted great. Especially you, Rochester, the way you pretended to be scared. Wasn't that good? <laughs> you certainly were. That was a wonderful idea. We finally got Jack to loosen up. Well, fellas, it's all fixed. Did you talk to your business manager? I sure did. He also manages the man who played the ghost, so none of you are getting razor. <laughs> Better luck next time, fellas. Jack will be back in just a minute, but first a word to cigarette smokers. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting, fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better, cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike, Lucky Strike. You know, friends, like so many of the best things in life, smoking enjoyment is all a matter of taste. And as many millions of smokers have discovered for themselves, the fact of the matter is, Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Sure they do, for two mighty good reasons. The first one is that Lucky's are made of fine, naturally mild, good-tasting tobacco. Practically the whole world knows LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. And then, Lucky's are made better to taste better. Put the two together fine tobacco in a better cigarette, and you just naturally get better taste. So friends, why don't you and Lucky's get together real soon? Be happy. Go Lucky. Go out and buy a carton. You'll find out Lucky's honestly do taste better. Be happy. Go Lucky. Get better taste today. You know, Rochester, even though you fellas all framed this seance, it was kind of interesting at that. Well, boss, you're not mad that we tricked you, are you? No, no, not at all. You mean it, boss? Rochester, I rather enjoyed it. Why? I was the one that slapped Dennis. <laughs> Good night, folks. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsburg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, Al Gordon, Al Goldman, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. This is the CBS Radio Network, KNX Radio, Los Angeles. You've been listening to the OTR Gold Network. Find more classic radio at otrgold.com.